once again. But on a frenetic night in Porto... Go abstract. Try a different angle, a different perspective. Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Roger Johnson and Seema Katecha. Hello, good morning. Our headlines today. Chelsea are the Champions League winners after beating Manchester City in an all-English final in Portugal. He has married his fiancée, Carrie Simons, in a secret ceremony at Westminster Cathedral. Good morning. A promising Sunday of sunshine awaits. Yes, we've got some low cloud mist and fog around. That'll lift. It's going to be another glorious day. Plenty of sunshine and getting a little bit warmer. All the details coming up shortly. When Carrie Simons posted the news on Instagram at the same time as announcing they were expecting their first child together. Wilfred was born in April last year. There had been lots of speculation about when and how the couple would get married. In the end, the reportedly secret ceremony at Westminster Catholic Cathedral took almost everyone by surprise. Downing Street has declined to comment. An unusual position, but one that chimes with the Prime Minister's long-standing wish to keep his personal life private. Mr Johnson's divorce from his second wife, Marina Wheeler, was finalised last year. It's gone eight minutes past eight on this bank holiday weekend. Uh, Roger, are you doing anything special? Uh, not a lot, but the weather's going to be good, which is, is. Uh, which is good news, isn't it? Uh, Louise will have the forecast for us in a little while. I think I've got to get up early again tomorrow morning. So while you're Indeed. enjoying your cold glass on the balcony tomorrow morning, <laughs> I'll be at work. Um, pubs will be doing a roaring trade today, though. An estimated 40 million pints will be pulled this weekend. Not make uh, beyond break even uh, because the efficiency of table service means that they have to employ extra staff. Um, so the reality of the situation is, is that those that can afford to do that style and option will retain it. But there are some pubs that simply cannot open because they cannot have vertical drinking right now. Or and in April, we were, we were slightly concerned. We weren't sure how it was going to be. But we're, we're seriously, we've been so boosted by the support we've received. And I think a lot of people have fallen back in love with the pub. I think they've forgotten about pubs and we're doing different things with their, with their social time. All planned lifting of all restrictions in England on June the 21st, three weeks away, of course, tomorrow. Let's talk to the epidemiologist, Professor Sean Griffiths. She joins us from Oxford this morning. Morning, Sean, and thank you very much, as always, for, for talking to us on the programme. We, we were talking now, you may have heard with the people involved in the hospitality sector about the 21st of June. Do you think we're on track in England for all the restrictions to be lifted as per the roadmap? I think the phrase data not dates rather sums it up. Uh, if you look across um, uh, at the moment across England, um, what we're seeing is we're seeing, uh, you know, high vaccination rates, uh, half the uh, group between 30 and 40 having now been vaccinated, which is great news. Uh, we, we're, but we're, and we're seeing numbers of hospital admissions and cases overall uh, are down as a as is the death rate. But then we're also seeing hotspots, particularly of the uh, variant that was first uh, uh, characterised in India. Back through the 100,000 free meals, it's quite sensational. If more people did what you did, we could put an end to HIV. Public office should not become the platform for private gain. So one baby wasn't enough? Were you a bit bored? <laughs> the BBC News Channel. More than just the headlines. Good morning. It's just gone half past eight. This is Breakfast with Roger Johnson and Seema Katacha. Yeah, good morning. It is an eyesore which blights alleyways, streets and fields. We're You've been affected by fly tipping yourself. Totally, and I think so many people have. But um, initially, I was struggling to report fly tipping where I live, borders on a couple of different councils. Some were great, others weren't. But I also got rid of my own waste, which turned up fly tipped. Yeah, I'm almost speechless. I'm very, very happy to share this moment with this team, with all the staff, with all the guys who support on an everyday basis in Cobham and um, the, the team. For, it's for them. It's for our team manager who is at home. It's for him. And um, yeah, it's for my parents and my family, my kids all in the stadium. It's fantastic to share. Great place to come and get a selfie, but uh, look at that. <laughs> There it goes. They um, 
they took the air out of it in the last um, sort of half an hour or so, uh, looking about as deflated as some of those Manchester City fans, but all the, the City fans and the Chelsea fans who have made the effort, jumping through all those COVID obstacles, taking PCR tests, taking their rapid flow tests here, having to take another PCR test when they get home. Uh, of course it was all worth it. The Manchester City fans uh, won't be feeling like that this morning, but just like those 2,000 Manchester United fans who made the effort to go to Poland in the Europa League final four nights ago. Uh, this is what it's all about. Ah, OK, let's uh, move on to uh, Oli Foster now, who is our sports correspondent in Porto uh, for us uh, now. Oli, I think we can talk to you on the screen here. I believe we can. Yes, there you are. Oh, there you are, Oli. Now I can see you. Uh, how, how was the atmosphere last night, Oli? Good to see you. <laughs> Uh, the atmosphere in the stadium was amazing. It felt close to normality, a 33% capacity at the Estadio de Grau, uh, an official allocation of 6,000 for each set of fans. But it, it just felt like football had returned for this huge occasion. We came down to the square here this morning because if you've been watching for the last couple of days... Um, the, the team, for, it's for them. It's for our team manager who is at my kids all in the stadium. It's fantastic to share. Yeah, very humble uh, statement there from uh, Tuchel. On the uh, flip side, Manchester City's wait for a Champions League trophy goes on. There's been plenty of criticism of manager Pep Guardiola's team selection. He went with a starting 11 he'd never picked before, but he had no regrets. Ah, OK, let's uh, move on to uh, Oli Foster now, who is our sports correspondent in Porto uh, for us uh, now. Oli, I think we can talk to you on the screen here. I believe we can. Yes, there you are. Oh, there you are, Oli. Now I can see you. Uh, how, how was the atmosphere last night, Oli? Good to see you. <laughs> Uh, the atmosphere in the stadium was amazing. It felt close to normality, a 33% capacity at the... Made no mistake with his second chance. Yeah, I'm almost speechless. I'm very, very happy to share this moment with this team, with all the staff, with all the guys who support on an everyday basis in Cobham and um, the, the team. For, it's for them. It's for our team manager who is at home, it's for him and um, yeah, it's for my parents and my family, my kids all in the stadium. It's fantastic to share. Yeah, very humble uh, statement there from uh, Tuchel. On the uh, flip side, Manchester City's wait for a Champions League trophy goes on. There's been plenty of criticism of manager Pep Guardiola's team selection. He went with a starting 11 he'd never picked before, but he had no regrets. Ah, OK, let's uh, move on to uh, Oli Foster now, who is our sports correspondent in Porto uh, for us uh, now. Oli, I think we can talk to you on the screen here. I believe we can. Yes, there you are. Oh, there you are, Oli. Now I can see you. Uh, how, how was the atmosphere last night, Oli? Good to see you. Well, roll on next season, but what a climax we've had to this season here in Porto. It certainly has been that indeed. Oli Foster, thank you very much indeed for that there for us in Porto. Let's get the reaction now from one very happy Chelsea fan, the broadcaster, Abby McCarthy, who joins us now from Kent. Abby, uh, how is it for you then this morning? What's it like? Deserves ...to be able to travel back to the Arctic where he belongs. OK, well, that's um, fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on this morning. hope you have... A pleasant weekend um, going forward and, and actually have some time off as well. And I'm looking forward to some time off. That's all from breakfast today. Roger and Sally will be with you from six o'clock tomorrow. Wishing you a very pleasant weekend and a great Sunday.